Hello, it's Aga from Arvis Artist. Today I love to talk with you about the working stations, so what to look at when searching for the best computer for you. If you're going to buy the new machine, there are some crucial parts to look at. But first, you need to ask yourself a couple of questions. So before buying the new machine, you need to decide first which software you are going to use. Simply saying, if you use a render engine that uses CPU rendering like Corona for instance, it will be better to spend more on CPU. But if you use V-Ray GPU for example, you'll need one or multiple strong GPUs to speed up your render times. So my point is that if you have limited budget, think what is more important for you, CPU or GPU. But remember, no matter what type of rendering you will choose, if you need the computer for professional purposes, you will need both CPU and GPU better than average. You may ask why. So for instance, if you render on CPU, you still need a good graphic card as it influences the speed at which you are able to complete your work. On the other hand, when you render on GPU, keep in mind that some processes like denoising or applying lens effects are done on CPU. A CPU, which is a central processing unit, commonly known as a processor, is a really important part and probably the most crucial one. There are two main factors to look at. The number of cores and clock speed. So if you're looking for a computer for 3D rendering images or animations, you should look at a CPU that has as many cores as possible. Why? When you're rendering, render engines assign buckets, so these little squares during rendering, to cores in your CPU. Each core will be assigned to its bucket and after this one is finished, the new bucket will be assigned. But during the modeling, the situation is quite different, because the calculations are done only on a single CPU core. So having multiple cores doesn't really help in making your viewport faster. So what is important here, we should consider a CPU that has as high clock speed as possible. If we take a look at CPU specifications, clock speed is described as processor frequency. Base frequency is a speed on which the CPU will run most of the time doing things like browsing the internet, for example. When the CPU starts to have more heavily workload, like 3D rendering, then it needs more power to keep up. In order to keep up, the Turbo Boost overclocks your CPU, so it can handle more demanding tasks. You can easily check with use of the Task Manager that 100% of the cores are in use during rendering when you use render engines that use CPU rendering, like Corona for instance. As a result, the CPU works on higher frequencies only when it needs to. This way, its life expectancy is longer because, for example, it won't get hot as much. To sum up, if you need your computer for active work such as modeling or texturing, for instance, you need a CPU with high clock speed. But if you additionally need it for rendering, you need to consider having as many cores as possible. You can do a math and multiply clock speed times a number of cores to compare which CPU will render faster. But there is a trap. Many cores need lots of power and as a result, they produce lots of heat. Because of that, the more cores the CPU has, the lower it will usually clock and vice versa. So we need to find some compromise here, because it gets very expensive to have them both. A GPU, which is a graphic processing unit, commonly known as a graphic card, will be responsible for things like displaying textures and shaders, for instance, and can also help with viewport performance, real-time effects and rendering. Now we have two main brands to consider, NVIDIA and AMD. Both have their advantages, but first of all, you need to know that not every GPU will be compatible with the software you will choose. 
So I would advise to check the requirements for the software first and then see if the graphic card you are into meet these requirements. Next thing to check will be the VRAM, which is the video memory of the graphic card. First of all, if you render on GPU, enough VRAM will be crucial. This is a place where your graphic card will hold the temporary information. So for example, when loading assets and data within a 3D scene, and then it will pass it to rendering. So for this reason, it's really important to have enough VRAM so your graphic card will be able to finish the tasks. Another thing is what resolution of the screen you will use. If you use full HD screens, the safe minimum will be 4GB of VRAM. But if you use 4K, you will need more, at least 8GB. Next thing to consider will be the processor of the graphic card, which is basically its main processing unit. The most popular and proven ones are those produced by AMD and Nvidia. The important parameter is also the clock speed and it's expressed in megahertz or gigahertz. Basically, the higher the values, the higher the efficiency of the entire system. Similar as in the CPU, we have base clock, which is the minimum speed at which it runs, and the boost clock, which is a boost to the normal speed of a processor and is the highest possible speed obtainable. And at the end, the cooling system. It is one of the most important elements responsible for the removal of heat generated during intensive work. In more efficient systems, it is necessary to use two or even three or even more fans, often a water cooling system. It all may sound really complicated and I think that the easiest way is to check the performance of the graphic card in relation to the software. So you can check the software website and compare other users' results. I will show you what I mean based on the VRA website. So you can see different GPUs and you can see the scores and the number of benchmarks for each. You can see that they are listed from the highest scores. You can check some top ones that are in your budget and look for the prices and calculate the performance to cost ratio. Based on that, you can do further research. RAM is a random access memory and it's basically used to store your working data. So if you work as a professional, I advise to take at least 32 GB of RAM, but it may not be enough. Basically, it depends on what type of projects you are working. If you're doing simple visualizations or animations, it will be fine but if you're doing the complex one with extremely high polygon counts, you use high resolution textures, or you work on scenes that have thousands of objects included, you will need to go with 64 or even 128 gigabytes of RAM. Otherwise, you will struggle with optimizing your scene to make it work. If you're a student or you're just starting your journey with the 3D, 16 gigabytes in most cases should be enough. Motherboard doesn't really affect the rendering performance, but this is the part which connects all other parts of the hardware together. So if you're looking for the motherboard, you should check, for instance, if the other parts are compatible with the motherboard. Even simple things matter, like the type of CPU socket, so you will be able to actually connect these two parts together. Also, you should check if the specific motherboard supports the amount of RAM you want, or it's important to check the compatibility with the GPU. Memory refers to the location of the short-term data, while storage is responsible for storing and accessing the data on the long-term basis. So there are two main factors to consider, the size and the speed. The storage is needed, for instance, as a place to back up your data, save projects, create a library of assets, textures, references, briefs from the client, not to mention all the software you will install. Simply saying, the bigger the size, the more you can have on your computer. 
Now, if you have an external storage as a server, one terabyte on the working machine will be enough. But if you don't have it, I would consider more storage. But it's quite easy to add storage afterwards, so you can always add it if you need. The second thing is speed. Basically, you can choose between HDD, hard disk drive, or SSD, which is a solid state drive. From my personal experience, I think that SSD is the must in this type of work we're doing. It's much faster and it speed ups the whole process of creating images. So if you want to be able to load and save your scenes quickly or load the textures and assets fast, start your computer almost immediately, you'll need a fast drive, which is the SSD. Now, there are also other things to consider, like power supply called PCU, which needs to have enough wattage, cooling systems, case, type of inputs and outputs, communication devices. But the ones we've discussed today are the most crucial one. So I think that after watching this video, you will be able to understand what to look at when searching for a new machine. Of course, it all depends on your budget and what do you need it for, but I think that this video will be a great starting point. The last tip I can give you is to always check the benchmark overviews, where you can compare the performance of different computer parts. Ok, let me know in the comments your thoughts on this topic. Thanks for watching, also don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video!